it's time to click the magical edit button to see what's under the hood of the mighty M Sound Factory. There are three tabs. First, the globals. Here you can find some general settings of the current sound. Volume, panorama, pitch, main envelope, stuff like that. But that's not so much fun. So we'll explore the other tabs in this tutorial first. Generator and FX look much alike, but these are actually very different. Generator defines how each voice is created. Click on an empty slot in the grid and you can choose from a variety of modules you can add. You may have even more modules available if you are using a newer version. Let's just insert an oscillator. I'll play a few notes. Every time I press a key, you can imagine that this generator structure is cloned for the new voice. So if I press four notes, there will be four oscillators running. Back to the editor. On the right of the grid, you can see the parameters of the new oscillator. In the title, there's the name of the module. Presets. And other handy things. Especially copy and paste buttons are often handy to copy settings between modules. The pop-up button on the right lets you show the module settings in a dedicated window. You can do the same thing by holding shift and clicking on the module in the grid. Very helpful if you want to edit multiple modules at once. In the bottom, you can see six outputs marked one to six. The generator produces six output lanes. You can disable each by clicking on it. M Sound Factory mixes separately each lane for each voice and sends them to the FX tab, which defines another modular unit, which is processed just once for the mix of all voices. The lanes are still separated though. So, Generator is run once for each voice and FX is processing outputs of all voices mixed and runs all the time, even if no voices are being played. Well, let's add some effect then. How about a reverb? There's a marvellous one, Turbo Reverb. You know it, right? That's because nearly all Melda plugins are available there as modules. And again, its settings are on the right. Let me play a few notes. The generator section also contains effect modules, which is quite unique, but why? Let me show you an important example with distortion. I will put a wave folder into the generator section and crank up the input so that it distorts it a lot. Now I'll copy the entire settings into slot B. And there, I'll first copy the wave folder settings and then delete it by holding Alt and clicking it. And create the wave folder in the FX section instead. And pasting the settings. So the slots A and B are quite identical, but in slot A there's a dedicated wave folder for each voice, but in B there's only one wave folder processing the mix of all voices. Let me play a note in A. And in B. Now let me play a chord in A. Sounds good. And in B? Horrible. You can hardly figure out which notes I actually played. That's because distorting a complex sound produces lots of inharmonious frequencies, and the more distorted the audio is, the worse it gets. This is a typical example where using generator effects is better than using effects directly in the FX section, unless this is what you're after, or you are creating a monophonic instrument. However, note that this will certainly require more CPU as well, since there will be multiple distortion units, one for each voice. Many effects are not available in the generator section, since it's quite complex to build such effects. And sometimes it's literally impossible. Take M Sound Factory, for instance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can put M Sound Factory itself into M Sound Factory's effect section. Why would you do that? Many reasons, but we'll get to that in other tutorials. 
In the next part, I'll show you more about the modular grids.